Okay, in this example, we're talking about the central limit theorem. In particular, we're going to find the probability that a sample has a mean which is greater than some value using the central limit theorem. Okay, so suppose scores on an exam are distributed with mu equals 80 and sigma equals 8. If 16 scores are randomly selected, find the probability that the mean of the scores is greater than 85. Okay, so I want to remind you, two things you need to memorize are that the mean of the means is equal to the original mean, and also the standard deviation of the means is equal to the original standard deviation divided by square root of n. You need to memorize these two facts when you're doing the central limit there, when you're applying the central limit there. Okay, so let's calculate a z-score. And after we calculate a z-score, we're going to find the area to the right of that z-score because the problem is to find the probability that the mean of the scores is greater than 85. So that's telling us to find the area to the right of the z-score. Okay, so we're converting 85 to a z-score. So it's going to be 85 minus the mean divided by... Okay, I'm, going to, I'm not done yet. I'm just going to slow down a little bit. If the problem was to find the probability that a single score was greater than 85, that's how we would compute the z-score. But we're applying the central limit theorem. So we don't have standard deviation in the bottom. We have the standard deviation of the means, which is sigma over square root of n. That's going to be in the denominator. So it's going to be 8 over square root of 16. Since we're using the central limit theorem, when we find the z-score, it's going to be 85 minus 80 divided by sigma over square root of n. And if you're entering all this in your calculator all at once, be careful to, to use parentheses to tell the calculator what the numerator is and also to tell the calculator what the denominator is. Again, there's many ways of entering it into the calculator. Me personally, I like to enter it all at once. And if you do it that way, you need to use the parentheses. If you want to try to calculate this in your head, 85 minus 80 would be 5 over 8 over 4, which is going to be 5 over 2, because 8 over 4 is 2. And then 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. But there are going to be plenty of problems where it's preferable to use the calculator. And in which case, you would use parentheses to tell the calculator what the numerator is and what the denominator is. Okay, so we're not done yet. We found the z-score. But remember, we're going to find the error to the right of this z-score because the original problem was to find the probability that the mean of the scores is greater than 85. Greater than 85 is telling us we're finding the error to the right of our z-score. So we converted 85 to a z-score, and now we find the area to the right. So to find the error to the right, we're going to use normal CDF. Normal CDF is a function on your calculator, and we do have calculator videos if you need help finding where normal CDF is. It's going to be normal CDF 2.5, comma, any big number. When we're finding the error to the right of 2.5, you enter normal CDF 2.5, comma, 10, or 2.5, comma, 100, or 2.5, comma, 20. Any large number bigger than 2.5 would work. And when you calculate that, you're going to get... 0.0062, and that is the final answer. 0.0062 is the final answer.